Hello my fellow skin makers and welcome to part 3 of the CS2 skin creation tutorial. So far we have talked about the resources and tools that we need for skin creation and have finished texturing and drawing on the weapon. We basically have our skin ready in Blender. What we'll do in this video is bake all the needed maps which we'll later upload to the game so that they can be applied to the weapon and used as a skin. But first let's talk about maps, what they are and why we need them. UV maps are a 2D representation of the 3D model and its textures. The act of creating these maps is called baking. When we bake, Blender takes the colors, the bumps, the roughness and other properties of the materials of the model and creates images of these properties according to the UV sheet of the model. Then the game takes these images and applies them to the weapon in the game and that's how we get to see the skin. There are several types of UV maps out there, but for CS2 we can upload 4 maps. Albedo, Normal, Roughness and Ambient Occlusion. The Albedo map represents the colors of the texture and nothing else. After we bake the Albedo map, it will look like this. Pure solid colors and gradients. There are neither direct nor indirect lights, just colors. Why are the drawings we made last video missing? Because it's not the Albedo map's responsibility to contain them. The albedo only contains colors. The engraved drawings can be found in the normal map. Normal maps contain all the height information that you add to the model. That means all the bumps on the model including engravings and anything that extrudes outwards. If your skin contains dents and scratches then they should also appear in the normal map. Normal maps look like this. The purple color indicates that the surface is flat and any change in color means that there's a change in the angle of the surface. Now the relic skin has a shiny body and rough pump and stock. How do we control that? That's where the roughness map gets in the picture. Roughness maps, as the name explains, define the roughness of the texture. The shiny parts will be represented by dark colors in the roughness map and the rough parts will have bright colors. And finally we have the ambient occlusion map. Ambient occlusion or AO maps are grayscale maps that define how the texture reacts to indirect lighting. Hidden areas in a 3D model usually have darker gray values in AO maps since they are less exposed to lights. It gives more realism to a 3D scene in graphics. In CS2 we can use AO maps in order to make some areas darker. Also in some cases where the default AO maps provided by Valve have darker values that affect your skin you can override the AO map with a solid white colored image and that would fix it for you. For this tutorial I will not create AO maps and will focus on the albedo, normal and roughness maps. Ok so let's start. First thing we need to do is create an image that we will use in order to store the maps we bake. So let's go to the shading tab, click shift A and choose image texture. Click on new and name the image UV or something. Set the width and height to 4096. You can click on the width and drag to the height and then you can change the values together. It's a nice shortcut that we already did in the previous video. Open the color and set the alpha value to 0 and click OK. We will use this image to save our baked maps. We also need this image to exist in all the materials of the model. So let's copy the node by pressing Ctrl C and go to the wood material of the pump and paste it. Before we leave the shading tab, make sure that the image texture node of the UV is selected and highlighted. Otherwise you will get an error when you try to bake. Or even worse, you might override one of the other images like the mask or bump images. Anyway, let's go to the UV editing tab. On the right side, go to render properties and change the render engine from EV to cycles. Because only cycles has the ability to bake maps. For faster rendering, change the device to GPU compute. If you can't do that, then you'll need to go to the preferences and enable your GPU from there. Now we scroll down to the bake section and expand it. There's a long list of bake types. I'll start with baking the albedo map, which can be done with the diffuse type, so that's what I'll choose. Remember how I said earlier that albedo contains no light information? In order to achieve that, I'll disable the direct and indirect checkboxes. Otherwise, the lighting will affect the bake results. Now please pay attention because this is very important. For some reason, with these settings, if the materials have any metallic value then the texture will appear black. You know what, I'll repeat that again, cut the music. 
If a material has a metallic value above zero, then the texture will be black in the baked result. So before we bake, let's go back to the shading tab and go to the metal material and set the metallic value to zero. Now you may be asking, but Viper my good man, this looks absolutely rubbish. I want my texture to be metallic. Don't worry about that, we'll make it metallic using the roughness map and the game settings that we'll see in a later video. For now, let's go back to the UV editing tab. In the margin section, set the size to be zero. The margin value tells Blender to increase the margin of the bake result. So instead of having the colors exactly fill the relevant parts in the UV sheet, it will overflow a little bit according to the value we set. So I normally set it to zero in order to disable that and limit the bake results to the relevant parts in the UV. Okay, so now we are ready to bake. Make sure that all parts of the model are selected, then hit the bake button. The process may take some time depending on your computer and on how complex your materials are, so please be patient. So this is our albedo map, fresh out of the oven and baked to perfection. Save the image by pressing Shift Alt S. I like to keep my files organized, so I'll create a folder and call it UV. And we'll name the file Nova Relic Tutorial UV. When we upload the baked maps to the game, they should have the TGA format. However, for now, I will export it to PNG because later I will modify the albedo image in GIMP and then export it again as TGA. But for now, let's move on to baking the normal map. All we need to do is change the bake type to normal and click bake again. Click Shift Alt S again to save as a new image. We'll call this one Nova Relic Tutorial Normal and save it in a separate folder. For the normal map, I'll set the image type to be TGA or Targa because it's ready. I won't do any modifications to it. And last but not least, I'll bake the roughness map. For that, I'll set the bake type to roughness and click bake. And again, we click Shift Alt S. Create a new folder, call it roughness and save the image as Nova Relic Tutorial Roughness. Of course, the names of the files and where you put them is not important. You can name them whatever you want and put them wherever you see fit. Like the normal map, I'll save the image as a Targa file. Perfect. We're done baking our skin and we're officially done with Blender. Actually, we'll come back to Blender in the final video to take some pictures for the thumbnail. But until then, we won't be needing it anymore. Final thing we'll do in this video is to add a customized alpha channel to our albedo map. Let's open the albedo map image in GIMP and talk about the benefits of the alpha channel. Okay, so this is our albedo map that we baked a few minutes ago. As I said, we need to modify the alpha channel. The alpha channel controls the transparency of an image. And in CS2, this channel is used to control how fast the skin of a weapon wears out. Skins in Counter-Strike have several wearing levels. Factory new, minimal wear, field tested, well worn and battle scarred. Factory new is the cleanest version of the weapon and battle scarred is the most worn level. Modifying the alpha channel enables you to control how fast or slow your skin gets to each wear level. Bright values for a certain area mean that this area wears out quickly and dark values mean that they will wear out slowly. In general, we have to create our own alpha channel because there are certain weapons with parts that wear out very quickly. And without an alpha channel, the skin on those parts may not appear at all, even in factory new level. In addition, using the alpha channel enables us to add easter eggs for worn levels, which means that you can add hidden messages or images that will only show for battle score drops for example. So with all this in mind, let's start. The way to modify the alpha channel in GIMP is by creating a layer mask. So right click on the layer and choose add layer mask. Make sure that the white option is selected and click add. Now we have a new white square next to the image layer. This is the layer mask. It's currently highlighted with a white frame but you can't see it because the mask itself is white. This white frame indicates which layer is selected. So how should we edit the mask? I want the metal parts to wear faster than the wooden parts but not too fast. So I'll color the metal parts with a medium gray value. I'll click on the layer to select it and then select the parts using the select by color tool which is easy because we only have one solid color for the metal. Now we move back to the layer mask, choose the fill tool and fill our selections. 
And now we can see that the selected parts became quite transparent, which means that we're working correctly. Now I will do the wooden parts. So let's select them by simply inverting the selection, which can be done by pressing Ctrl I. Now everything that is not part of the metal area is selected. I want the wood to wear much slower, so I'll give it a darker gray value. By the way, never use pure black for alpha. It will be discarded by the game as if you didn't add anything for that area. Anyway, as we did earlier, let's choose the fill tool and fill the selected areas. Now the entire image is barely visible. And if we look at the layer mask, we can see the colors we chose for each part in the mask. A tip that might come in handy for you is that you can view the mask itself by right clicking on it and choose show layer mask. But I'll undo that because we don't need it now. So all that is left for us to do is to export the image. Click Ctrl E to get the export dialog. As I mentioned earlier, the UV maps need to be in TGA format. In GIMP you do that by changing the file extension to TGA. Click export, then export again, and we're done. So this concludes the UV maps part and now is a good time to end the video. In the next part we'll take a look at the CS2 workshop item editor and upload the UV maps there so that we can finally see our skin in action. Until then, take care and see you soon.